This is Bob Guerrero of New Concept Video Sports, and the 2021 Indiana High School football season is finally upon us. And tonight, it's the 4A state runner-up from a year ago. The Craig Osika led Hobart Brickies out of the Northwest Crossroads Conference as they host the 6A Chesterton Trojans, led by ninth-year head coach Mark Peterson from the Doonland Athletic Conference. Last season, Chesterton came up a few points shy of a sectional championship, losing to Elkhart in the finale. That loss left a bitter taste in the mouths of the Trojans who feel they're ready to take the next step, and they have the talent to do just that. Once again taking the snaps is Chris Mullen, who threw for over 1,900 yards a year ago. Combined with running backs Ethan Pickering and receiver Jackson Westmoreland with 38 receptions. Barring injuries, this talented group has a chance to win the conference and possibly play for some sectional hardware. What can you say about the Hobart Brickies except their back? It's nice to reminisce about the past, but in the sports world it comes down to what have you done lately. And the mighty Brickies from decades ago are once again getting what they feel they deserve, and that's recognition as a state power. Hobart lost in the state finale last season to Indianapolis Ron Colley, whose teams won 10 state championships, five since 2002, and are loaded with talent year after year. The Brickies this year are led by freshman quarterback Noah Ehrlich, who we don't know much about. But if you're a freshman, especially a play caller, and start for the Hobart Brickies, which is unheard of, you must be a special kind of talent. Then you can add running back Trey Gibson, a junior transfer from Wheeler in the backfield, and you have a nice one-two punch. Hobart also has a fine group of upperclassmen led by Ryan Flores, Connor Bott, Braden Carlson, and others to help solidify this young group. Next, Indiana High School football with the Hobart Brickies hosting the talented Chesterton Trojans. Remember, you can download any of our sports videos for free. It's new concept video sports way of supporting the student athlete. We hope you enjoy this no huddle highlight reel. Chesterton won the toss and decided to defer. Kicking off for the Trojans will be senior Jackson Westmoreland. And on the receiving end of the kick for Hobart is Wheeler transfer junior Trey Gibson, who scooped up the ball inside the 10, then carried to the 18 where the offense will begin play to open this 2021 season. Taking the snaps this evening is freshman Noah Ehrlich. On first down for the Bricks, the ball was handed to Trey Gibson, and he carried to the 21, bringing up a second and seven. Before the next snap, an encroachment penalty on the Trojans will move the ball to the 26, leaving the Brickies with a second and two. This time, a pass attempt intended for Cody Johnston fell incomplete. Next, Ehrlich pitched the ball to Trey Gibson, who came up short of the sticks, bringing up a fourth and one. From the Hobart 28, Craig Osika decided to make an attempt, and it was the right call. With Trey Gibson finding the hole the O-line gave to him, and powered his way to the 34 before being dropped by senior Gage DeMarco. And a fresh set of downs for the Brickies. On first down for Hobart, an incomplete pass, and the Bricks are looking at a second and ten. But before the second down snap, a procedure call on the home team moved the ball back five yards. Once again, the ball was handed to Trey Gibson for five, up to the 34-yard line. Next, a pass intended for Anthony Williams was almost picked off, and a Hobart punt is next. Junior Mickey Jankovic doing the kicking for Hobart, and the ball was downed at the Chesterton 42. Good field position to open play offensively for the Trojans. Before the snap, another procedure call on the visitors moved the ball back to the 37, and now a first and 15. Taking the snaps for Chesterton is senior play caller Chris Mullen. And on the first down snap, the Brickies rushed five, led by Jacob Simpson, flushing Chris Mullen out of the pocket and out of bounds at the Chesterton 28. A tough start for the offense thus far. Then on second and about 26, a nice pass over the middle to junior Ethan Troy for a 16-yard gainer. 
back to the original line of scrimmage before senior Braden Carlson made the tackle at a third and ten next for Chesterton. Next for Mullen, a strike to junior Levi Wheeling, who made the reception at the midfield strike, kept his balance before being dropped at the Hobart 43. Once again, a procedure call on the Trojans before the snap, backing up the visitors to near the midfield stripe at the 48. On first and 15, a quick pass to Jackson Westmoreland, who got down to the 42 before Cody Johnston made the stop. On second and nine, a pass in the flats to Levi Wheeling, who was in motion, and he carried to the 35 at a makeable third and two for Chesterton. Then on the third down snap, Chris Mullen called his own number, and a Chesterton first and 10 at the Hobart 24 yard line. Then on the first and 10 play, Garrett Lewis was handed the ball and was smacked by senior Ryan Flores who coughed it up and it was recovered by senior Dakota Vanderberg and a nice stop by the Hobart Brickies. So the Brickies are back in business at their own 20. And on first and 10, it was Trey Gibson for a short gainer. But on second and nine, Noah Ehrlich let one fly over the middle. And hauling it in was Cody Johnston for a first down. From the 39-yard line on first and 10 for Hobart, it was Trey Gibson again, and this time for about seven. Next, from the 46-yard line on second and three, Noah Ehrlich swung one out to Mickey Jankovic, and a Hobart first down at the 49-yard line. On first and 10, Trey Gibson got the call again, and was stopped by Ethan Troy for a short gainer. Then on second and six, it was right back to Gibson down to the 44. And now Hobart is looking at a third and three. This time, Ehrlich took the snap, escaped pursuit, and fired the ball to Mickey Jankovic, but short of the marker, and a fourth down for the Brickies. It was right back to Trey Gibson, but short of the first down sticks and a nice stop by the Trojans defense. From the Hobart 43 yard line in Chesterton on offense again, it was Mullen with a nice pass to junior Bryce Tomar before Braden Carlson made the tackle, but another reset of the chains for Chesterton. Then with under a minute to play in the first and a fresh set of downs at the Bricky 40, a flip pass from Mullen to Bryce Tomar, and he was able to slip a tackle and gain a few yards on the carry. Finally, on the last play of the first, a Mullen scramble for a few yards, and time expired. After one period of play from Don Howell Phil at the Brickyard in Hobart, Indiana, we have no score. Back with second quarter play, next. With the third and seven, Mullen took the snap, avoided trouble, then fired a pass downfield target for who else but Jackson Westmoreland, who had a step on his defender, made the catch, and took it in for the first score of the year for the Chesterton Trojans.
The Chesterton kick to restart this game was charmed down at the 39-yard line by the Brickies. And that's where the home team will take over, trailing by a half a dozen. On first down, it was Trey Gibson for maybe a yard on the carry. Next, it was Noah Ehrlich stepping back and in trouble, and he decided to throw the ball away. But on the play, an intentional grounding call will move the ball back to the 20, and a loss of downs. Then on third and a bunch, it was Gibson who picked up about nine and was hit hard on the tackle, and a Hobart punt coming up. The boot was fair caught at the 39 by Ethan Troy and a chance for the Trojans to extend their lead. On first down it was Garrett Lewis's turn, but he was only able to pick up a couple yards before Ryan Flores made the stop. Mullen swung one out to Ethan Troy, but their making the play was junior Gavin Miller back to the original line of scrimmage and a third down coming up. Then a pass attempt over the middle that fell incomplete and a Chesterton punt. What looked like a possible fourth down attempt ended up with a Mullen quick kick that worked well for the Trojans with the ball being down at the nine yard line and the Brickies have possession. On first down, a quick pass to Mickey Jankovic for about six yards. It was back to Gibson for another bricky short gainer. From the 16-yard line on third and three, there was no place to go for the Hobart back and another punting situation for the Bricks. Then a Mickey Jankovic pump that was nearly blocked, but he was able to get it off and it was finally downed at the Hobart 43. Good field position for the visitors. On first down for the Trojans, a big gainer. When Mullet called his own number, carrying down to the Hobart 24, and another reset of the chains. Next, a pass attempt that was no good, and a second down next up for Chesterton, already leading by six. Then a swing pass from Mullen to Ethan Troy, but he was stopped in his tracks by Gavin Miller. On third down for the Trojans, a pass over the middle to Levi Wheeling, who came up short of the sticks, and a fourth down attempt for Chesterton. So on fourth and one, Mullen on the attempt, but the Brickies stood up the Chesterton quarterback and will take over on downs. From the 15 yard line on first down, it was Trey Gibson for no gain. Then another incomplete pass, and another third and long for Hobart. Finally, a sideline pass and catch, but the receiver made the reception out of bounds, and another Hobart boot. So with 2.44 left in the half and still leading by only a touchdown, the Trojans have another opportunity to put points on the board before the break. 
On first and 10 from their own 41, a shot downfield that was off the mark. Next, a two-step drop, and down goes Muller, but a five-yard loss for the Trojans. Then on third and long, another Mullen keeper, and a fourth down for Chesterton. On fourth down, another Mullen quick kick, and the Brickies will have the ball first and 10 at the 28-yard line with less than two minutes to play in this first half. Noah Ehrlich took the snap but couldn't find a receiver open. Rolled left, then against the grain and fired a perfect pass to Trey Gibson for some positive yards. A nice play by the freshman Bricky play caller. A second and eight incomplete pass brought up a third and eight with time becoming a factor in the half. This time it was Ehrlich who targeted Christian Velazquez for a gainer, but two yards short of the marker and a fourth down for the Brickies. The punt rolled out of bounds at the Chesterton 26, so the Trojan offense will have just over a minute to try to extend their lead before the half. On first down, a shot over the middle intended for junior Tyler Peterson fell incomplete. Then it was Chris Mullen on the keeper. Next, a sideline pass to Peterson for a short game. Another pass to Peterson for another short gainer. So now the Trojans are looking at a fourth down with just a yard for the first. Then a quarterback keeper and a Hobart stop. And that will do it here in the first half with the Trojans leading the Brickies by only six. Back with the third quarter coming up. Chesterton will receive the kickoff to open second half action with Ethan Troy making the grab at the 7 and taking it to the 30. And that's where the Trojans will begin offensively, already leading by a touchdown. On first down, the ball was handed to Garrett Lewis for a pickup of about 5. Next, it was Chris Mullen on the keeper for maybe a yard. Then on third and four, the Brickies rushed seven, dropping the Chesterton play caller for a loss and a Trojan punt coming up. The punt rolled out of bounds at the 27 and the Brickies will take over trailing by just a touchdown. On first down, the ball was handed to Gibson for a short gainer. Then it was Noah Ehrlich hitting Mickey Jankovic on the slant for a bricky first down at the 40-yard line. Next, it was Ehrlich on the keeper. And what looked like a loss initially was a six-yard gainer weaving through traffic. Another nice play by the Hobart freshman. A second and four incomplete pass bringing up a third and four from the 47-yard line. This time, nothing doing when the Chesterton rush dropped the bricky play caller and the home team will have to punt. <music> 
So with 6.41 left in the third, the Trojans will once again be on offense. On first down, a three-yard pass from Mullen to Bryce Toma ended with a nice Braden Carlson tackle. And that'll bring up a second and seven for the visiting Trojans. This time, Chris Mullen was scrambling for his life when Jacob Simpson made the stop for a loss on the play. And the Trojans have a third next up. Then on the play of the day for Chesterton, Chris Mullen looked, then scrambled out of trouble before throwing up a pass down the far sideline that was caught by junior Bryce Toma at the 34. And he took it the distance, and the Chesterton Trojans strike again. The Trojans decided to go for two, but the Bricks made the stop. So with 5.01 left in the third, the Brickies trail the Chesterton Trojans in the season opener, 12 to nothing. The Chesterton kickoff was a pooch grabbed by Hobart senior Jacob Arizare near the midfield stripe. Great field position for Hobart, trailing in this one by just 12. From just inside the 50 at the 49 yard line, Noah Ehrlich took the snap, a little scramble, and a nice reception by Anthony Williams for a gain of six yards. Next, it was Trey Gibson slipping through defenders and picking up another first and 10 for the home team. It was back to Gibson, but the Chesterton defense made the stop for no gain on the carry. Next, an Ehrlich pass that was almost picked off and a third down coming up. Then for Hobart on third down, a delay of game penalty will move the ball back to the 45. And now they're looking at a third and 15. This time for Hobart, an Ehrlich pass that fell incomplete and the Brickies will have to punt. The Hobart punt was down at the 26-yard line. But a bricky penalty, too many players on the field, will move the ball up to the 31. And that's where the Trojans will take over offensively. The first down snap was handed to Ethan Troy, and he was dropped for a loss of one on the carry. Next, a nice play by the Chesterton play caller as he took the snap then found a crease before firing a pass to senior Luke Stento, who made the catch before going out of bounds near the midfield stripe and a reset of the chains for the Trojans. For the Trojans on first down, the ball was handed to Ethan Troy, but once again the Chesterton back was dropped by the Bricky defense for a loss of a couple on the carry.
Next, on second and 12, a shot downfield that was off target. And a long third and 10, next up for Chesterton. On the play, a shot to Tyler Peterson for eight yards. And a fourth and four coming up for the Trojans. But before the snap, an encroachment penalty on Hobart will give the visitors a first and five at the Bricks 39 yard line. This time it was Mullen on the keeper for 11. And another Chesterton first and 10. From Don Howell Field at the Brickyard in Hobart, Indiana on the season opener, the Trojans have a two touchdown lead over the Brickies heading into the final stanza. After three periods of play, Hobart trails Chesterton by 12. The fourth quarter is next. The Trojans open play in the fourth, leading by a dozen, and now are looking at a first and ten from the Hobart 28. The ball is handed to Ethan Troy for a little or no gain on the carry. On second down, the ball was handed to Troy again, and he found an opening and stumbled forward for a Chesterton first down. From inside the red zone at the 17-yard line in first and 10, Mullen on the play action tossed the ball to senior Luke Stento, who was in motion and was able to make players miss and into the end zone for another Trojan score. Following the touchdown, the Trojans tried for two, and this time Ethan Troy went in for the score. So with 10.34 left in this contest, Chesterton leads comfortably. The Trojan boot was filled in at the eight yard line by Cody Johnston, and on a nice run carried to the 36th, and it's time for the Hobart Brickies to start making some noise. This time, the Hobart O-line opened a nice hole for Trey Gibson, who carried near the midfield stripe, and a fresh set of downs for the Brickies. It was Gibson again, this time for six, bringing up a second and four from inside Chesterton territory at the 46. Next, a two-step drop and a pass to Brayden Carlson, and another bricky reset of the chains. On first down from the 33-yard line, it was Gibson down to the 25, bringing up a second and short. This time, Ehrlich hit Cody Johnston in stride and he carried inside the red zone down to the three. And the Bricks have come alive all of a sudden and are threatening for the first time this evening. For Hobart's hot second goal, it was Gibson down to the one. Then on third down, a nice defensive stop by the Trojans. But on the play, a personal foul penalty on Chesterton will move the ball to the half-yard line and a fresh set of downs for Hobart. Finally, at the seven-minute mark of the fourth, Trey Gibson is in for the touchdown.
The Mickey Jankovic extra point was good. So at 6.57 left in this opener, the Brickies now trail Chesterton 20-7 with plenty of time remaining in this one. The Bricks tried a scribber to restart the game and it was filled it cleanly at the 45. Good field position once again for the Trojans to start their drive. On first down, the ball was handed to Bryce Toma, and he was able to move the chains. From inside Hobart territory at the 44-yard line, another first and 10. This time, Toma carried for maybe two before being stopped by the Brickies. Again, it was Toma, and a nice defensive stop by Hobart. Then on a big third and seven for each team, a quarterback keeper that was sniffed out by senior Alex Pickett and a punting situation next up. Another Chesterton quick kick and the Brickies will have the ball on their own 20 with a little over four minutes left in this opener. On first down, Ehrlich had no place to throw the ball, so he decided to take off but was stopped following a two yard gain. Then on second and eight, on a play that worked earlier, Ehrlich once again hit Cody Johnston in stride. And a big first and 10 for Hobart at the 46. What makes this freshman quarterback special is seen on this next play. All his receivers were covered, but he made something happen. A huge first down. More importantly, the future of this Hobart offense was captured on a single play. Let's look at it again. Once again, it was freshman quarterback Noah Ehrlich making something happen. You don't see this kind of play too often, especially from a freshman. Then on first and 10 from the Chesterton 13-yard line, Ehrlich swung one out to Trey Gibson, and he picked his way down to the six, and a second and short coming up. Finally, it was Trey Gibson up the gut, and all of a sudden, the Hobart Brickies are back in this run. The Mickey Jankovic extra point was good. So with a little over two minutes to play in the season opener, the Brickies have crept back in this one and now trailing the Trojans by only a touchdown. The Hobart boot was filled at the 27 yard line and all Chesterton has to do is run out the clock. On first down, a loss of one on the play. 
and a nice Justin Sawyer and Ryan Flores tackle. Next, a quick Bullock to Westmoreland pass, bringing up a third and three for Chesterton. On the snap, Ethan Troy was handed the ball, and the Brickies made the stop, and a fourth down coming up. Another Chesterton quick kick, and the Brickies have 22 seconds left in this one. On first down, a shot down field that was a little strong. Next, another pass attempt that was no good. Then on third down, an Ehrlich to Zach Bloom pass near the 50. And time for maybe one more play. Finally, a scramble by Ehrlich, and this game is history. The final score, Chesterton 20, Hobart 14. Congratulations to head coach Mark Peterson and his Chesterton Trojans on their victory here tonight. For the Brickies, the future is now. I haven't seen a quarterback with this much upside in years, especially a freshman. If you're a Brickies fan, come on out and watch the future develop in front of your eyes. Hobart has something special on the horizon. We would like to thank Hobart High School and Hobart Athletic Director Mike Black for his hospitality as usual. And we'll see you next time. For new concept video sports, this is Bob Guerrero.